It's no secret that with the release of The Sims 4, some features and details from previous Sims games were omitted or forgotten. Well, today we'll be looking at the ones that I miss the most from The Sims 2. Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today we're taking a look at some details and features I really loved playing with in The Sims 2. So prepare for that nostalgia throwback and get your snacks ready, let me know what you're having in that snack report and don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Do you guys remember the Electrono ticket machine from The Sims 2 Open for Business? After starting your own business, you could place the machine on your lot and start charging people to come in. Depending on the amount of expansion packs you had, you could really make whatever you could think of that would require an entry fee. If you had nightlife, you could make a bowling alley, or if you had free time, a florist workshop for example. Someone even made the Cityville shopping district fully equipped with a H&M clothing store, arcade room, cinema, art gallery, gym, cafe and more. You could charge an entry fee and then Sims could purchase other items as well. Watch me fail trying to put this red rope fence around and then not figure out how it works to let Sims in. Even though you don't actually need it, Sims stop right in front of the ticket machine. <laughs> anyway, it's also hilarious to see Sims pay to get in to just hang out, like watch TV and drink this shitty drink my Sims just blended. You have to make sure there are enough modus satisfying objects so your customers can look forward to something nice as well, like a TV or arcade game. With this though, you can make them suffer as well. Lure them in with a false sense of security and then start giving them personal training sessions and work them until they give up and leave without you noticing whilst you try to demonstrate how it's done. Yeah, good job there Jeff. But of course you can make much more impressive establishments. Oh my god, I miss these features so much. It's incredible what people made from cinemas, gyms, arcades, to bowling alleys, leisure centers, and more. You can run the business from home, but you can also buy out properties and start trading there to be able to have more space and expand. Someone even made a car dealership. So cool. Although once you finish running the business and it gets dark, your sim will basically travel back in time when they come home as things stay the way they're left, so many opt to have that family lot owned business after all. The Sims 3 also had a similar machine that came with Le Cinema Plum Bob from the Sims 3 store. You could even allow or restrict certain age groups, life states and genders. With this though, you couldn't manage the business yourself, but you could place it around town and play with it as a customer. This never worked for me though, so I don't know, it was really buggy. Maybe I was doing something wrong. What do you guys do to make it work? Let me know in the comments. Toddlers are amazing in The Sims 2. I don't know if it ever happened to you guys, but toddlers could climb out of the crib and run around when you weren't looking, adding that extra bit of depth and making you really need to keep an eye on them even when you thought they were tucked in. Their playing is completely different to a child's for example as well, so they keep biting the doll in the dollhouse or smashing around the toys. Were you ever annoyed at them playing in the toilet and making puddles? I would get so annoyed because my sim would have to come home from work and have to clean them up for ages. Kids can dance on adults' feet. Such a cute little feature I miss. Also, depending on what grade they received, kids and teens react differently to report cards after stepping out of the school bus. I never liked this next one because it felt like I failed my teens, but if their relationship is bad enough with their parents, teen sims can run away from home. When your teens run away, the parent or guardian can call the police straight away to help find them, but it's not really a given that they will. They might or might not be found. In my case, my teen ran away due to her horrible relationship with her parents and siblings and stayed on the streets until she was almost a young adult. Then she came home with the biggest poker face, went upstairs, used the computer to apply to university and just left. Still, during the cutscene for her moving to college, her dad was right there crying by her side. She's had a tough life, but I'm invested and I will give her a better one. What do you guys think she should major in? Oh 
Oh my god, cooking. I miss The Sims 2 cooking so much. I mean, look at those details. Sims actually use the cabinets around them for utensils, bowls, and pans. Plus, the food looked bomb. I always was so hungry watching them cook and begged my mom for some spaghetti. I once saw my Sims salt their spaghetti over and over again, so I salted my spaghetti over and over again. It came out pretty nasty, so I wouldn't recommend it, but I had to do it. <laughs> also, when a Sim has mid-hunger, they start automatically drinking milk and grazing from the fridge to up their need. With nightlife, your Sim could own a car and drive to any lot, including work. You could also hang out in the car, listen to music, and woohoo. I would always get my Sims to woohoo in the car after a date, sometimes even on the restaurant's premises. I always wanted my child Sim to succeed in life, so I would almost always invite the headmaster. You know, for that extra added in-game stress. And let me tell you, each time was terrifying. All the cooking that needed to be done, the cleaning, and making sure each room didn't plummet your environment levels. Many a times have I failed, and this time was no exception. <laughs> Proposing is always an amazing experience in game. You get like a rush and you feel so happy for your sims. But it's always standing somewhere, be it at the beach, on a hill, or even at a restaurant. But let's say you want your sims to get engaged at a restaurant while seated. Well, in The Sims 2, you could. You had the option of proposing on one knee, or got to do it at a table and then have a little champagne toast. Oh my god, I miss this detail so much. I wish food in my fridge just appeared randomly. Imagine having to go out to buy your groceries. <laughs> well, in The Sims 2, you kind of had to. Unless you're super lazy like me and use the computer to buy grocery delivery instead. This was one of my favorites because it added so much realism to my gameplay. I loved having to replenish my Sims' fridge. Going out and actually seeing my sim choose their items, open doors in the fridge section of the store. Such a great feature. I always loved seeing their basket, even though it looks the same every time. It looks to me like she's got some ice cream there, milk, flour, or maybe sugar, some meat, like maybe sausages, and maybe some fish or meat wrapped in paper, and of course the egg carton. Same with clothes, you had to go out to buy them, they wouldn't just appear in your wardrobe. You could straight up buy them or try them on as well. Uh, excuse me sir, are you okay? <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, uh, they try them on in the changing rooms and they take a long time too. Not to mention the little camera detail as well. I also love the fact that when your sim grows up and they maybe have like a younger sibling, the sibling actually gets to wear the clothes that their older sibling used to wear. It's, it's so realistic, I love it. Memories. Self-explanatory. Just memories. Both Sims 2 and 3 had them and they just add so much to the game. The storytelling, the drama, the emphasis on a life lived. I like The Sims 3 memories, but I much prefer The Sims 2. I just really love the icons, and each memory says something, and I don't know, it's just way better. <laughs> Imagine seeing your life as a movie. All big events have a specific scene, and you're seeing it as it unfolds. Moving to college, your first kiss, moving to a new house, giving birth, woohooing for the first time. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe this one you could leave out of the movie. Uh, okay, <laughs> alright, that's enough. All like a little movie played out in your head. Yep, you guessed it, Sims 2 scenes. 
These made me feel like I played such a special part in my Sims' lives. Each time my teen Sim had a first kiss, or they moved to college, I felt like I helped my little pixel person accomplish something amazing. And last but by no means least, making your own freaking neighborhood. The Sims 2 and 3 had this, however, The Sims 3 had create a world as a separate tool to the game, which had to be downloaded. In The Sims 2, you could make one right there in the game. You just clicked on create new neighborhood and had plenty of choices when it came to world templates. You pick the template and the type of terrain and you're good to go. You can then place decorations, empty or populated lots and create your very own drama. I always made a deserted island for my sims and had that kind of a castaway sandbox gameplay. Ooh, I'm actually gonna go do that right now. <laughs> See you guys next time. All right guys, there you have it. Things I miss from The Sims 2. Let me know in the comments below what you guys miss most. I would like to thank my Soul Soul channel members, Jiggly and Chrissy Pine. Thank you both for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons Whitney Marion, Papa Khan, Negative Dana, Aurora Grimm, LeMay, ML, Alia Deshayes, Shelby Hill, Perlog Anwil, Kitajan the Arcane Archer, Nicole Dante, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, Asmina, and Sabrina. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!